Hey there parents, Mr. C from the Raspberry Pi Foundation here again with another quick video to help you support your child through their coding education. Now, we do a lot of projects on the Raspberry Pi website and they're really fun, easy to work with and just copy along and make a thing that works. But you'll find that no matter how easy the project or how good at coding your child is, they'll always come to a point where their code just doesn't work. Now, one of the most important skills you can teach them when it comes to coding is what we call debugging. As any professional programmer, or even people who just code for a hobby will tell you, debugging is a major part of coding. Not only because it's really important to be able to go back over your work and understand why it's not working, but because there are almost nobody in the world who can write code that just works the first time you want to do it. And even if you do, there are always ways you can go back over your work, streamline it, make it more efficient. And debugging is the really, really powerful way to be able to do that. It teaches your children a lot of other skills along the way, like persistence and patience, and we'll get into those in a little while. But the most important thing you should know is that having to debug your work after you've written it is completely normal and an expected part of being a programmer. The most important thing you can do for your young person is to stay positive. When young people are learning to code, it's very easy for them to quickly build up a lot of frustration when things don't work because they haven't had the opportunity to build up the patience and persistence that you and I have today. So the thing that you need to do is remain positive, be encouraging, and remind them that Rome wasn't built in a day and that the programs they use on their machines took months and months of professionals working on it in order to get them to that reliable state. Working through your code a piece at a time can often be a hard slog, but you need to be there behind them, being positive and saying, it's okay, we're nearly there, just, just a bit more to fix and then everything will be okay. So what practical tips can I give you to help young people who get stuck with their code? Well, number one is take a break. Walk away from the screen and go and do something completely different. Just watching TV or playing a video game isn't going to be enough. You need to get away from the screen, get away from the context that's frustrating you and do something you enjoy, something totally different. I often find that when I get stuck with my code or something in my project isn't quite working, going outside, getting some fresh air in the sunshine, listening to a book or a podcast or kicking a football, throwing a frisbee, really helps my brain to subconsciously process the issues I'm having with my code. And it also gives me a chance to step away from that small context where I'm getting really frustrated. It's very easy to miss the forest for the trees if you're continually beating your head against one single problem at a screen. But going away from that screen, getting outside and doing something else will make a big difference to the young person. The second tip I can give you is don't give up. So even though we say walk away from the problem and take a break, that doesn't mean completely ignore it and forget about it. What you should do is go away, do something else, and then come back to the problem later when you're feeling a little bit refreshed about it and a little less annoyed. So very often it doesn't need to be the same day. It doesn't need to be within an hour or half an hour's break. Go away from it and come back to it tomorrow or in a week's time, that's fine, but do make sure that you bring the young person back to that problem and help them work through it for a number of reasons. It teaches the persistence and resilience we were talking about and being able to work through your own problem and come through the other side, that triumphant feeling is one they'll begin to attach to that problem-solving process that they're going through. It's very important to attach that win to the problem rather than just have an insurmountable problem that continues to niggle at you forever. So go away and then come back. And the third one is show them examples of other people failing. If you want some great examples of people failing at code, watch me on the live stream. Because very often young people come in, throw us a curveball, and then we work through the problem together until we get to that triumphant point. So show them examples of other people having problems, failing, and then working through those problems, coming back and getting that solution at the end. That's really, really important for them and something that they'll start to associate with working on their code. We've got a lot of projects on the project site that you can work through. They're really nice and sequential and laid out in easy steps for young people to follow. You can also follow us at Digital Making at Home where we're releasing new content every week, different projects on different themes, and we have the live stream on Wednesday afternoon. So come along and watch that as well for some real live coding examples and some interactive ways. You can put comments on the, on the video while we're working through it. You can ask us questions and you can give your suggestion as well. There've been a couple of times when we've been stumped by code, so we throw it out to to the audience to see if anybody who's watching has got a solution for us. We've also got the parents newsletter, so sign up for that. I'm assuming you might know about that already if you're watching this video, but if you don't, the parents newsletter that we're producing gives some really great tips, some really great content for you to work through with your young person. 